Now here's a little piece that you might enjoy. It's where we look at our archive footage. Could be a horse race, could be a train or a driver. We just don't know. But we do know it is called In Case You Missed It. A few years back, we here at the Sport of Kings had the opportunity to meet up with one of Canada's legendary horse race callers when it comes to standard bred horse racing. That would be Frank Solis, the man they call the Velvet Voice. Not only was Solis entertaining, informative, he was just plain a nice fella to be around. I knew really before I was 10 years old that I, I would hope to work uh, in news, sports, commercials, some sort of media form like that. As early as um, 1963 or so, when I was eight years old, I would be taken to the old Detroit Olympia to see the Red Wings play in the old six-team NHL. And uh, I would, um, at, uh, you know, very many years before I was preteen, uh, call the NHL games right out of the stands by memory because I was so into it. And really that was the whole foundation for going on to a life's work, uh, you know, now 31 years and counting, uh, speaking into microphones. Uh, I think it can be nothing but good for it. Well, Dave, another fantastic win. Uh, thank you for your time to do this interview. And you know, it all maybe. does seem to cross over well into racing um, because of the, the speed, the color, the closeness of the, f uh, the finishes, the keenness of the competition. Um, and I've always approached it from the standpoint that um, every horse and every person involved has a story to tell. In my position in Toronto, with the way it's gone the last 15 years, it's a nightly live worldwide television show. And now that's even evolved into the internet. She's a cinch. They're off by a dozen on the rest of the field. She's a cinch is coming you know, when people hear a race a night in, night out, I hope they know that this is not the highlights. You know, we're trying to give it the best shot night in, night out. Like everybody who gives it all of their emotional, physical and intellectual energy to make uh, Canadian horse racing what it is. How do you do it? There's a simple answer to this. Fear. <laughs> you would like to get it right because uh, you don't want um, winning ticket holders unnecessarily throwing down tickets or losing ticket holders thinking they've won erroneously. If you're in doubt about a name, you can look at the horse's pedigree, uh, you can break it down phonetically, you can call the trainer in the paddock before the race. It's also the day and age where people are keeping their winning tapes, you know, in their home archives and now they're burning them onto DVDs and this sort of thing. So, you know, you uh, really are on trial each and every race to get it right. Obviously, there's room for human error and, uh, you know, there's a substantial amount of that, uh, never intentionally, of course, and never as the result of neglect or unprofessionalism. Uh, but um, every race is like a new audition. I've had the great, unbelievable fortune to have now announced 100 $1 million races on live national television, which is off the scale for anything I ever expected to do in my life. But the only other people who could understand what that's like uh, in the moments leading up to a million dollar race as they come to the gate on live national television would be the other announcers to know that it's kind of you against the world. And for that minute and 50 seconds or whatever it is, the rest of the world goes away and it's just you and the race. And they're off and pacing with Endo Saki taken off the gate and getting a poor start. Hippie Chick is first away quickly for Rick White to grab control of the lead. Really, really ecstatic to finally get the chance to interview you because this is a fascinating... I'm just a lucky guy to be there. So um, I've got to max it while I have the chance. And I hope the legacy would be uh, that I gave it my all.